Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Democrats are ready to sit down and negotiate with Republicans right now. But it should be over legitimate issues, like how much do we invest in education, job training, and infrastructure. Virus. Not unrelated ideological issues like Planned Parenthood. You we need virus. to set our sights higher than that. We need you to reverse it. harmful cuts to middle class economic priorities, retrovirus, close you. loopholes that benefit only a fortunate few at the top, and invest more in the things that help our God. entire economy grow. Because he stink. There is nothing principled about the idea of another government shutdown. Whew. There's nothing patriotic Fair. about denying the progress right, you have worked so hard. You know, don't, I can't take him anymore. Colonel Fats Domino, I can't take him anymore either. You know, I can't sleep at night. In the middle of the night, I'm waking up and saying, where does this psychotic think he has the right with the stroke of a pen to override the people in the Congress on every issue? Now, now, last week it was 10,000 Muslims from Syria, allegedly Syria. Then it was 100,000 by Saturday morning. Then Kerry and the gangsters say it's 200,000 Muslims. And I ask myself every day, where is Congress? Where is the government that is supposed to protect us from a psychopath, a retrovirus like this. I don't know where the government went. Then I wake up and I find out where the government went, exactly where I knew it was, right into a whiskey bottle. John Boehner, as you well know, is a drunk. I've been affectionately calling him Clink for three years. Then it came out he was a drunk, nothing but a stooge drunk. And then to top it all off, Boehner on dealing with conservatives says the following. In an interview with the uh, front group for the Obama camp, Politico, which is nothing but a front organization, a newsletter of the Obama sorority. In an interview with Politico, Boehner says, how do you how do you deal with conservatives? So Boehner says, quote, garbage men get used to the smell of bad garbage. Prisoners learn how to become prisoners. All right. Boehner said in a phone interview this weekend from Seattle during a fundraising trip to the Pacific Northwest. So that's the drunk. He calls conservatives garbage. This is what we have for a government. This is how the psychopath, the retrovirus, can think he can just sweep in 200,000 uh, Muslims. Now, I, I gotta tell you something. Do you actually think that 200,000 Muslims are gonna be it? First it was 10,000, then 100,000, then 200,000. Do you actually believe it? Now, the question is, how does he get away with it? The answer is, what can we, the people, do to stop him? Because stop him, he must be stopped. You understand that there's a communist revolution going on in front of your eyes. You say it's going on. What are you talking about? I don't see any red hats, and I don't see any uh, shootings in uh, Tiananmen Square. I don't see any re-education camps. You don't? No, you don't, do you? Well, let me explain something to you. As I explained on Friday on my most brilliant show of 21 years where I talked about Mao Zedong and the <clears throat> People's Republic of China, how they slowly brainwashed the people, how they took control of the people, how they started to beat people and control people. And I had a caller on Friday that stunned me. He had lived in China most of his life. And he said he got back three years ago and he knew some of the Khmer Rouge, those were the 10, 12, 13 year old thugs who were used by the communists to beat up their teachers and their parents and then kill them. Uh, he said to me, you're 100% right that Obama is exactly on the road of Mao Zedong. And uh, he used the word Mao Obama, which I had coined several years ago. He didn't know that. Obama is a mad dictator. We have a system of government that is supposed to control mad dictators. It's called checks and balances. As you know, he neutralized the court. As you know, Roberts is being blackmailed, and that is why Roberts is no longer of any value, and the court itself is of no value. The Supreme Court is nothing. It's a stooge court that has no meaning. There is no Congress anymore. So we the people are stuck with a, dicta a dictatorial government that consorts with dictators. Look at the Castros. The Cuba is a 
is a prison camp. The Pope, by the way, is also part of the program. The bouncer, I call him, because he started as a bouncer. And I know this is offensive to Marco Rubio, but Marco Rubio is perhaps the least qualified candidate in American history to have ever run for the presidency. He is a boy who was able to sell ice cream on a tricycle in Miami. That's about all he's equipped for. You wait until you hear what he said about the Pope. You're not going to, well, you will believe it, since you know Rubio is a stooge of Larry Ellison and those in the uh, uh, <coughs> technological industries that want cheap labor at all costs. They don't care what it does to America. I, you know, you don't understand something else. Billionaires are psychotics by and large. It's what impels them to become billionaires. And their psychosis is such that they have a disease for profit. It's an actual mental disorder. You know how I say liberalism, liberalism is a mental disorder? Well, these billionaires, in my opinion, like those who run Microsoft, Facebook, have another disease called the bottom line. It's an illness for which there is no cure. They also are supposed to be checked with taxation, but they're not. They don't pay regular taxes like you and I do. They uh, receive it through the double Dutch, double Irish, double your flesh, flavor uh, kind of taxation. And that's the opening to my uh, show today. So before we go any further, I'd like to play It's a Long Day Night, Long Day's Night by the Beatles. I'll invite you to call at 855-407-282. I will fix my telos, baby. Right. Is anyone else dreaming about the communist revolution going on right in front of your eyes? See, it's a new communism. It's not the Marxism of 1916, 15, before the Bolshevik revolution of 1917. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a new form of communism. It's based upon several new methods, and I've described them all in previous books. I won't bore you with the details, and it's also a hot Monday across America. In fact, the heat here is overwhelming. It's like the summer of Sam in uh, Northern California, which permits the alarmist gangsters uh, to uh, peddle their, their bill of goods. The alarmist gangsters who build railways to nowhere and make billions of dollars on the land sales along the railway lines are now peddling the global warmest lie in order to peddle the green energy lie as far as they can. And so the summer of Sam continues out here in California. We talked on Friday also, is Obama a Muslim? And I have to reiterate for you what I said. A, by patrilineal descent, he is a Muslim. And I do not know when he converted to Christianity, if he did, and I assume he did, because we have to take the president on his word, given that he's the most honest man in the history of the presidency. He said he's a Christian, so we accept him as a Christian. Uh, his father was a Muslim. His adopted father was a Muslim. He went to a Muslim religious school, but that unto itself is not a, a problem. I don't think you understand that. Whether he is a Muslim or not is not the issue. The question is, where are his allegiances and alliances? We know he's dedicated to the subversion of Western white European Judeo-Christian Judeo based democracy. Let me repeat that if you missed it. Whether he's a Muslim or not is not the issue. There are many Muslims who are fighting ISIS. He's not one of them. Obama is dedicated to subverting Western, white, Europeans, Judeo-Christian-based democracies. And he's tied directly to others in this Stalinist-style political correctness, which uh, was discussed in great detail on Friday when I talked about Mao, Mao Zedong. And just on a kind of lighter, disgusting note, since I need to get your attention on this Monday, and frankly, it's so hot, it's hard to focus. I am using that evil air conditioning the Pope derides. I know there's no air conditioning on the Papal Plain. I realize there's no air conditioning in the Papal Quarters. I realize the Pope will not be in an air-conditioned UN. But I myself am an, an, am an e evil Westerner, and so I did crank up the air conditioning to fight the, uh, the, warm, the warming trend out here. And I apologize for using the fossil fuels to generate the air conditioning. But I got to say, I think that whoever invented air conditioning did far more for humanity than this bouncer from the Vatican has ever done or will ever do. He doesn't understand the first thing about economies or poverty. The Pope is a moron. 
He is one of the stupidest people I've ever encountered in the history of the intellectual world. He is perhaps the dumbest man on earth. For him to read this garbage without even understanding what he's saying is unbelievable to me. Let's take his own country. Let's take the country that the bouncer came from. He came from Argentina. Argentina were, once had the, the world's 14th highest per capita GDP. It is now the 63rd because of the Pope's agenda for global regulatory norms. Exactly what was done in Argentina is what the psycho from the Vatican would like to do to the world. His own country is an example of what happens when the leftist university types are able to take control of a, of a country. The capitalist commerce that the bouncer disdains is the reason that the portion of the planet's population living in poverty went down from 53% to 17% in the 30 years since 1981. Even in countries which have almost no income, according to economist Indor Goklani, life expectancy increased, went up from between 25 to 30 years in 1900 to 62 years today as a result of capitalism. It's unbelievable to me that this liar can get away with this. How in the world can the Catholic Church permit this lunatic to lie like this? He himself is the worst thing in the history of Catholicism in terms of the thinking, uh, the thinking Catholic. Look, the illiterate morons who will embrace religion, no matter who peddles it to them, are not going to even understand what this idiot is saying. So for them, he's popular. Do you understand that most idiots don't understand science? So if you get a guy like this, a goofball like this, talking about global warming and saying it's God's will that you don't use air conditioning, you don't do this, they believe him. What do they know? They go in there like the sheeple they are and throw money in the till and kick it upstairs to the Vatican. It's a scam. It's a Ponzi scheme, like all religions are, a giant Ponzi scheme. You want me to get started on religion? Get me started on religion, because I'll start with Catholicism, and I won't end there. But I'll do it another time. We keep hearing about Muslims and Islam and radical Islam. How about radical Catholicism as practiced by Jesuits? We keep hearing about radical Islam and the danger radical Islam poses to the world. Well, now you see what this man is, this Francis guy, who is just a man. I don't understand how Rubio could say a thing like he's a descendant of God. I, I don't understand this. He says that, uh, yeah, he's a descendant of God. He has to respect them. What do you mean you have to respect? You have to respect a lying idiot? You have to respect the man who wants to take away your freedoms? No, Marco, you don't respect the man who wants to take your freedoms. He is the supreme zero. He is part of government zero. And I'm speaking about <laughs> my most important book called Government Zero, which is still not available to you except on Amazon. I'm jumping up and down, and I'm saying to the publisher, release the damn thing. It should have been out on the day of the Republican debates, but it won't be out for another month. I finally made them send me tear sheets of Government Zero because I couldn't wait any longer. I know I'm going off too soon. And I explained what is Government Zero. But most importantly today, and I'm not going to read it to you, I'm going to wait for the book is out so you can flood the bookstores and send the message to the media that you exist, that you're not garbage, that you're not a stooge of the Pope, I have a full 8,000-word chapter on the Pope, who he is. And I call him Pope Zero because he is the beginning of the end of the Catholic Church. Now, you have to understand there are many different Catholics just as there are many different segments of the Muslim population. We keep hearing that most Muslims want radical Islam eliminated. We keep hearing that most Muslims are not radicals. I have to believe that. Or else everybody would be blowing up everybody at all times. So that's on, on the face of it is true. Do you believe that all Catholics believe the lies being spewed by this Jesuit? Do you actually believe that the Jesuit represents Catholic values? No, he's a radical Catholic. So we're going to use a new phrase on the show that is sure to uh, get uh, the Catholic League upset. And we're going to use the phrase radical Catholic because there are radical Catholics just as there are radical Muslims. This man is a radical Catholic out of touch with reality.